So here's what this is really going to do for us. It gives us a way to find relative maximums and minimums. All right, we looked at finding absolute maxim, maximum, ax, maxima and minima, um, but now we're going to look at relative versions. Okay, so the first derivative test. All right, this is not the first derivative test. <laughs> this is the first derivative test because it's using the first derivative to test something. All right, so let C be a critical number of a function f that is continuous on an open interval i containing C. Okay, if f is differentiable on the interval, except possibly at C, then C, f of C, that point, can be classified as follows. If f prime of x changes from negative to positive at C, then F has a relative minimum, or local minimum, if you like the other terminology, at C, F of C. If F prime of X changes from positive to negative at C, then F has a relative maximum at C, F of C. And if F prime of X doesn't change sign at C, then C, F of C is neither a relative max nor a relative min. Okay, so basically we're looking for places where the derivative has changed sign. That will give us a relative extrema. In one case, um, it'll give us a minimum. In one case, it'll give us a maximum. All right, we'll have to see how this uh, works. So let's see. Find the open intervals on which the function is increasing or decreasing. We know how to do that. Locate all relative extrema. All right, so let's take a look at this function, uh, 3x squared minus x cubed. All right, if I'm going to do anything with this, um, as far as finding, increasing, decreasing, finding extrema, I need the first derivative. All right, so the first derivative is simply 6x minus 3x squared um, factored uh, 3x times uh, 2 minus x. All right, so then I need critical numbers. So I'll ask when is the derivative equal to zero? When is the derivative undefined? And the original function is defined. Uh, all right, well, the derivative is zero. We have that when x is zero and when x is two. And there isn't anywhere where the derivative is undefined. Okay, so zero and two are critical numbers. We don't have any discontinuities of the function. So we're going to go to a graph now, um, a chart of the first derivative. OK, so we're going to put 0 there. We're going to put 2 there. All right. And now we want to know, again, uh, we want to know the signs of f prime. OK, so let's go back to the factored form of the first derivative, I'm going to start plugging in numbers. So if I plug in something less than 0, say negative 1, I would get a negative from 3 times x, and then times 2 minus negative 1 would be a positive. So I'd get an overall negative in this region here. If I plug in 1 between 0 and 2, I would get a positive times a positive, so positive overall. And if I plug in 3, I would get a positive times a negative, or a negative overall. Remember, those were just test points in each region to figure out what the sign of f prime is. I don't need to know the exact value there, just the sign. All right. So this tells me that f is decreasing here. In this region, f is increasing in this region, and f is decreasing in this region. All right, so that's um, given told us what the intervals of increase and decrease are. Um, so we'll characterize that in a minute. But here's what it also tells us realize that if I'm looking at this region here where f is decreasing, all right, that means. As I'm approaching zero, my function is decreasing, and I get to zero, and then I start increasing it afterwards. 
that means that what's happening there has to be a relative min because it's bottoming out. Right? And it's at the point where x is 0, and I don't have the y yet. I'll get that in a minute. So at 2, though, it's the opposite. It's been increasing before, and then it's decreasing after. So I top out there. That's a relative max at 2 something. OK, so if I want the y values of those points, I have to go back to the original function. And so sometimes I'll make a little chart like this with important points. And I have to find what y is, or in other words, what happens from the original function. Okay. So if I plug 0 into that original function, I get 0 minus 0. And if I plug 2 in, I get uh, 2 squared is 4 times 3 is 12 minus 2. Eight, um, so I would get four. So that tells me that my relative min was at the point zero zero. And my relative max was at the point two four. And now I can pretty much sum it all up. All right, I have the intervals where f is increasing and decreasing. It was increasing here, so on 0, 2, and it was decreasing on the other intervals, so negative infinity to 0 and uh, 2 to infinity. All right. Then I also was able to figure out where my relative min and my relative max were. I had a relative min here at 0, 0, and a relative max at 2, 4. And so in here, I've been able to capture a lot of the information about what the function is doing, where it's topping out, and where it's bottoming out. Okay, let's try um, another example. x plus 1 over x. Okay, so one thing I'm going to note is always good to do. There is a discontinuity at x equals 0. All right, the other thing is I think I probably want to look at this function um, over one uh, denominator. So if I get a common denominator of x, this would be x squared plus 1 over x. All right. So I'm going to go take my derivative. Derivative of the top, 2x times the bottom, x minus the top, x squared plus 1 times the bottom, 1 over x squared. Uh, simplify this, and you should get x squared minus 1 over x squared. I skipped a step in there. And this would be x minus 1, x plus 1 over x squared. All right. So that's our good uh, factored form right there. That tells me that the derivative is 0 when x is 1 and negative 1. And the derivative undefined and f defined? Well, none. It is undefined at 0, but the original function wasn't defined at 0, so I don't count that as a critical number. Okay, so we can go to our chart. All right, so I'm going to have f prime. I'm going to have 0 because of the discontinuity there. I'm going to have negative 1 and 1 because they're critical numbers. All right, now if I go and pick numbers inside, so like a negative 1 for that, I'm oh, sorry, negative 2 for that first region, and I plug it in, I should get positive. 
And if you follow that same idea, I should get negative in here, negative in there, and positive in there. If I took, say, um, negative one half in the second interval, uh, one half in the third interval, and say two in the uh, fourth interval there, plug them in and you should get those results. All right, so that means that I have F increasing in there, F decreasing in there, F decreasing in there, and F increasing in there because of the signs of the derivative. That also tells me that at these two points, I have some relative extrema. All right, so it was increasing before negative one and then decreasing, so that must be a relative max at negative one something. And at one, it was decreasing and then increasing means it must have bottomed out one something. Okay, and so I need to find out what the values are there. So again, if I consider my original function, um, which was uh, x squared plus 1 over x, if I plug in x of minus 1, I should get a value of the function, negative 2, and at 1 I'll get 2. So that means um, the relative max was at negative 1, negative 2, and the, max, and the relative min was at 1, 2. And so I could summarize now. F was increasing on uh, negative infinity to negative 1 because of that, and increasing also on 1 to infinity. It was decreasing on negative 1, 0, and 0, 1. And then we had a relative max at negative 1, negative 2, and a relative min at 1, 2. And there's all our information.